So if you watch the channel, you know I've been getting a lot of these lasers. Two of these, um, the Ortur and the Longer, were the first ones I tested. The Atom Stack is the giveaway for this past week. That'll be going to someone on Sunday. I have a Jakota. I'm in the process of testing, and that will be the next giveaway. And then I also have two other newer lasers that will also be making giveaways for. Now, I am not a laser expert by no means. I've only been playing around with these for a couple months. I know the Ortur is a good example. They're already on their third model, so they do update rather quickly and regularly. But I wanted to do a little, sh this is gonna be a YouTube short. It's probably gonna be one take on my iPad. I just wanted to do a little video on some compare and contrasting before I started getting rid of some of these lasers and shipping them out because I have been getting a lot of questions about which one I like the best. And to be perfectly honest, and I've said this in comments, I find all four have performed fairly similarly as far as engraving and cutting. It's really the add-ons and accessories that start to set these things apart. Now for all four of these, I believe you can work wire wirelessly. So if that is something you would want from these, that is a bonus. I usually have them hardwired to my laptop um, just for personal preference. I don't like, I know some of them even have apps, but I don't like doing a lot of stuff on my phone. So I just have the price points. They're all quite similar. The Your Tour comes in at about 600 and these are current prices for the links on my, my site. I'm sure there are places you could find them a little bit cheaper and the prices will change, so keep that in mind. The Atom Stack, this is the one that I'm giving away this week, is $569. The Jakota is the cheapest one at $529 right now, and the Longer Ray is $559. Um, now, one of the things that you'll see on these models are limit switches. When you set these up in your program, you can set all the lasers up to home, which is usually going to be the upper um, left-hand corner, at least for, for myself. The only one of these that does not have limit switches is the longer array, which can make it a little difficult to set up homing. And mine, I actually had to end up turning off homing because the machine kept kind of ramming into the side. But all these other machines have limit switches, which I prefer. The um, one that I just tested, these are actually pretty visible, so I could show you. This right here is going to be your limit switch. It's just a little switch that the laser hits and then tells the program that is it is at the end of its working surface area. Um, that could be something that you prefer. I prefer them. It's not really a deal breaker, but I do like the ones with limit switches. Another thing to consider is the cutting area. These are all pretty similar cutting surfaces. The longer and the Artur were the same, which was 400 millimeters by 400 millimeters, which is roughly about 16 by 16 inches. The auto Atom Stack was a little bit longer, I believe but the Jakota is the biggest one by far. Um, now the numbers on the side don't necessarily mean that's how far they can cut. You can see this one says it goes up to 550, but um, technically the laser is well above that 550, but this one is still by far the largest cutting surface area, which I do like, and it is coming in at the, the cheapest price. So that is something to consider. I know some of these sell extensions, um, I don't think any of these models do, but I could be wrong about that. The other consideration are going to be risers. The Ortor I do really like, but it is the lowest um, laser I have. You could tell pretty easily by the other ones it sits the lowest, which means pretty quickly if you're doing something thicker or using your rotary tool, you have to set this up on something. They do sell risers and I've just been propping them up on blocks of wood. But it is nicer, especially the Jakota. You can see how tall it is already. Um, I haven't had to make any adjustments with this one, which is nice because you can see I've quickly learned that if you want accurate um, engravings and accurate cuttings, you really should have these um, stamp taped down or, st or, or secured somehow so they don't move because even if um, your programming is wrong and these back into the sides, 
too hard, it will shift the entire carriage and throw off a whole engraving. So I like the fact that this one is already the tallest of the four, and I haven't really had to make any adjustments. The problem with the Autour is not only is it the lowest, but it sits on these little rubber feet, and in order to secure this down, you're going to have to make some sort of external jig so that it can't move. Once again, these are all little things to look for um, when purchasing these because I find they perform pretty similarly. The next thing is going to be the rotary. I honestly don't think I'm going to be using the rotary a lot, but the Ortur excels in the rotary because you can switch very quickly from... Um, the YRR axis to the Y motor axis. The Y motor axis is going to be the rotary, so it's a, a simple switch. On all these other ones where your, your uh, axis comes into the machine, which is going to be one of these tabs, they're all labeled. You're going to have to unplug one of those and attach the rotary. Once again, not a huge deal, but it is nice to be able to use a switch especially if you're using the rotary a lot. It could be a hassle to have to unplug all these little switches. And these wires, you know, they're just into these little plastic connectors. If you're constantly yanking these in and out, I could see them breaking uh, quite quickly. On that same note, um, the belts. The belts and the tensioning are going to be the driving force to all of these. Every single one of these, except for the Jakoda, I had the belts tensioned wrong. The machine, you'll think it's broken at first if that happens, and you have to change the, the belt tensioning. The Ortur, I like the best because the belts um, are covered. They're down. I can lift this up. They're actually down underneath. You can see I'm sliding there. Here's the belt so dust doesn't get on them. And the tensioning tool is in the back here. It's actually just a little hex nut. You can move back and forth. These other ones, now I know a lot of people make coverings for these, which you really should do. I'm not doing that yet just because I have to move these around the shop. But these ones with the exposed belts, you could see when dust builds up on here, the rubber bearing wheels will slide on this dust and it won't cut. So you really have to keep these clear if you're using these in an open area. And all these other machines use these little tabs in order to hold down the belts to tension them. You can see this one is on the side, which is nice, because then the dust, it's harder for the dust, obviously, to get in here versus the top side belt, but this one as well. And these could be finicky, the way you tension these belts. So I do prefer the covered ones. In that same kind of vein, all of these wires are loose on these machines. Um, this is also not a huge deal, but the Jakoda has the drag chain for both of the wires going to the X and Y axis, and I really like that. It keeps everything nice and clean and tied up and out of the way. When you're having a machine like this running in the shop that's plugged in by power and a USB, and then we'll talk about air assist a little later, and then I have my air vent over there, it's a lot of wires on the table. So when all this stuff, like these loose wires, can really get in the way, um, the machines don't really get hung up on them. It's more for just working around the shop. To have everything concealed in a drag chain is really nice. I prefer that one by far out of all of the other designs. Um, that brings us to the air assist, which I just mentioned. These are all going to have connections for air assist. The autumn stack is the only one, the atom stack is the only one I didn't have air assist for because they didn't send it to me and there was no way to fit the air assist I had to this one because it's a completely closed, concealed uh, module. But the Artur has a nice port on the top for just hooking up air assist. Makes it super simple and easy to do. Um, the longer ray doesn't really have any of those, those add-ons, but it does have the fins on the side, so I was able to hook up the air assist I had to that one. And the Jakoda has the air assist in the drag chain. So it comes out over here. There's going to be a loose end, which I put this other laser on top of, and then that could go right to your pump. So all these little things will add up to, to, to um, pluses and minuses for all the machines, but I do like the, easy, the ease and efficiency of hooking up the air assist to the Jakoda and the Artur. The 
Other thing you're going to have to think about is raising and lowering these modules. Once again, the Artura is the easiest because that is built into the laser module. There's a little kickstand that you set up on your piece. There's a little knob here that raises and lowers the laser, laser. Extremely simple. All these other three have standalone raising and lower mechanisms. I don't love that design just because in a shop like this, these little pieces are extremely easy to lose. And if you lose them, especially, um, these ones are all different sizes, so it's not even something you could replicate. This one actually has a measuring tool depending on the thickness of the material, which I'm assuming is a bonus because it will then, in fact, give you more accurate results. But this is a standalone piece. Now there is a hole in this, so if I was keeping this one, I would probably just put um, a string or something and attach it to the lasers. But it would be nice if they all had little sections where you could keep these pieces so you don't lose them. This one is just a sheet of plastic. Once again, you can measure this and, and write it down so you have it. But it is just nice when it, the, the raising and lower is built in. And same with this one. It's just this kind of circular cylinder that you use in the back of the machine to get the accurate depth. So the laser focuses accurately on whatever, whatever you're cutting. Um, as far as build time, I know, for, personally, I found they were all extremely simple to put together. Some are more time-consuming than others. For instance, out of the box, the gantry was together for the Artur and the longer, but I had to put together the gantry for the Atom Stack and the Jakota. The gantry for the Atom Stack, in general, I find this one to be the, the most basic of the four, was extremely easy to put together. The Jakota was the longest uh, time commitment for putting this together, but I, it has a lot of features that I like, like putting together the drag train and all of uh, drag, drag chain and all of that took a little bit of time, but I, I do think it's worth it because it is a nice design element. But I would say I had all these together in an hour and a half and was testing them, and the Jakota was, was towards the, the higher end of that time commitment. And then one of the last things that I'm going to point out for this video, and I imagine I'll have a couple more of these as I test these more and more, because the goal of these lasers are, I think they're really cool machines, and I just want people to be as informed as possible about them, because sometimes on the websites and whatnot, they're going to tell you things that aren't necessarily accurate. Um, but the other thing is going to be how the laser moves. So the, the um, Artur and the Jakota do not have any external um, accoutrement, if you will, in order to move the laser. That, for me, um, is also not a deal breaker. The Atom Stack has an external display, and so does the Longer Ray, which I will admit are nice. I do like them. I've used them on both machines, especially the Longer Ray. But honestly, that is mostly, for the Longer Ray, that was mostly because since this machine didn't have limit switches and I couldn't get it to home, I had to use the, the panel in order to set up the machine. If this had a homing device, I probably would not have used the display um, as much as I did. But they are nice um, to, as accompaniments to, to the laptop, and I'm assuming, like I said, I haven't used these wirelessly yet, but I'm assuming if you want to primarily use them wirelessly, that is where the external display will really come into handy and, and be helpful with, with these. But that's kind of the basic. There was at least 10, 10 or so bullet points on these machines. Um, I wanted to do that. Like I said, these two are getting shipped out within the next couple weeks, and I wanted to compare and contrast before, before they're out of my shop. I've said this in all the videos. I think the big thing with these machines are going to be longevity. And unfortunately, especially with giving some of these away, it's just going to not be possible um, to be able to gauge that. But the ones in my shop, I will keep you up to date on because, like I said, they all perform pretty similarly. These are an example of that. I've tested and cut on all of these so far. Now, the settings you have to change, which is why some of these are darker than others. I've pretty much used the same settings on all the engravings. But as far as engravings and, in cu and cutting, so far every single one of these has performed without a hitch. Um, the main issues I've had, like I said, were getting the belt tension right in the first place. Because if you don't get the belt tension right, 
or if you have dust on the belts, the laser will not move properly. 